Hello and welcome, my name is Kyle Furman and welcome back to another Call of Duty video here on the channel. Today, we've got a whole bunch of brand new information surrounding the open combat missions, which are of course going to be a big deal when it comes to Modern Warfare 3's campaign. I did talk briefly about it yesterday, but today we got even more information, including a video that talks about it from Call of Duty, where developers talk about it, which I will show you guys here in a second as well as some detailed information, which is really, really awesome. So uh, the gameplay in the background is actually some Strike Force missions from Black Ops 2 from a long, long time ago. Uh, now these missions are really, really similar to uh, what these open combat missions are. Basically, the Strike Force missions back in Black Ops 2 were where you spawned into the map and you basically controlled how you, how you went about the mission. And they were pretty fun, pretty cool. They were not really huge missions, but they did impact the story quite a bit. And in Black Ops 2, if you didn't complete all of those Strike Force missions, you actually didn't get the good ending of the campaign. So I'm not sure if these are going to have an impact in any way on the ending, but they are still really, really cool. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and play you guys the clip or the two minute video of what the open combat missions are. And then we'll go ahead and come back and talk about a few things. So I will see you guys at the end of the video. Modern Warfare 3 introduces open combat missions, which for the first time allows players the choice of how to complete objectives based on their preferred playstyle. Open combat missions are part of the campaign. They're part of the story, but you get to play them in the way that you want to play them. Those who like stealth gameplay, can play it stealthily. Those who like to snipe, or if you like vehicles, or if you like to go guns and blazing, all of those options are supported and afforded to you as a player. This isn't just some additional mode that lives alongside the campaign. This is intertwined with the story, and we've intentionally dispersed these throughout the campaign. When the player starts the mission, they are given a loadout. But as they go through and play, they'll be encountering new weapons, tacticals, loot crates. And these are all added to your arsenal. Players can change it up. Play the mission now with suppressed weapons and sneak around. Or strap on armor plates and run in loud, get right into the action. Enemies are now adapting and adjusting to your playstyle. Open combat missions have a decent amount of replayability aspect to them. And when I say that, it's less about go through the entire game and start over and play it a second time. It's more about within each mission, trying to experience it in different ways. In one level, we start you on top of a catwalk overlooking the entire level. Hopefully by that point in the game, the player has gotten to a point where they can figure out how to start picking it apart. So player empowerment is a huge part of that level. You may even decide, you know, to challenge yourself on some of these, like what's the fastest I can do this, or can I just bring a knife to a gunfight and really kind of push the bounds on what you can bring as a player. These are the type of campaign missions that we've always wanted to create, and we just can't wait to get them into the hands of the players. All right, guys, welcome back. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Again, most of the stuff that was detailed in that video, I will be talking about here. Uh, there's just a few tweets from Charlie Intel as well as Sledgehammer Games, uh, and it says here, open combat missions enable players to approach the hashtag Modern Warfare 3 uh, campaign with a new level of freedom, larger play spaces, scavengeable loot, and support from a variety of play styles sit nicely alongside the classic cinematic missions that you know and love. So this is uh, very self-explanatory. Uh, they're basically having campaign and war zone together. Basically, you loot stuff. You go around the big map or a specific part of the big map and explore around and do missions basically your way, which again is something that I'm really a big fan of. Uh, the next week here says open combat missions will feature kill streaks, loadouts, loadout crates, vehicles to use, in game loot like revive kits, field upgrades, and more. So that's very, very cool there. And last but not least, it says in the Modern Warfare 3 open combat missions, you can change how you play as you play each mission, start a mission in stealth, and switch to guns blazing at any point. So, again, very, very cool here. As you guys know, I mentioned it in one of my previous Modern Warfare 3 videos, but I will most likely do most of these as stealth just because I enjoy doing it the best. Um, so, that's basically just the information that we got from Charlie Intel via tweets. But now we actually have a full in depth blog post, which I will go ahead and read here for you guys uh, now. So it says, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 Campaign Innovation Deep Dive Open Combat Missions. So it says here, Task Force 141 Rules of Engagement Change to Fight the Ultimate Threat. Learn from Sledgehammer Games and Infinity Ward about Modern Warfare 3's Open Combat Missions in this Deep Dive. So it says, A New Campaign, A New Innovation, Open Combat Missions. So it says, Yesterday we revealed some incredible footage of Operation 627, the first mission of Modern Warfare 
of the Modern Warfare 3 campaign. The full campaign is available up to one week prior to the game's official launch on November 10th and is available through campaign early access. So it says here, campaign innovation, open combat missions in detail. So it says, in the continued pursuit of innovation throughout Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 3's campaign introduces a new element, open combat missions. A departure from traditional campaign levels, these missions redefine player agency, offering an unparalleled degree of freedom and adaptability tailored to individual play styles. Unlike conventional levels, the open combat mission missions transcend boundaries, empowering players with diverse strategies to achieve their objectives. Whether embracing the shadows with a stealthy approach or unleashing an all-out assault, the gameplay mechanics flexibly accommodate a spectrum of choices, enabling players to forward their own path towards success. And it's something that David Swenson, the campaign creative director at Sledgehammer Games and his fellow uh, developer Robert Pitts, associate director of level design, we're excited to share as part of the Intel drop. Again, you guys just saw that video earlier in this video. And next it says, fixed objectives, open combat. Open combat missions still have fixed objectives, but how you accomplish them is up to you. Although these missions begin with a set loadout, Swenson explains you can find a variety of other equipment, including additional weapons, supply boxes, and other opportunities to change or confirm your approach to what you think is the most advantageous way to completing the objectives. We know we knew we wanted a bit more opportunity for the player to craft their own experience, says Robert Pitts. Pitts explains that open combat missions are intentionally dispersed throughout the campaign to create a seamless intertwined experience between these and the traditional cinematic missions. These missions allow for free roam within enlarged mission and boundaries, but in exchange, there are minimal checkpoints, which actually offers you additional opportunities to return to your mission infiltration to rethink your strategy. So it says return to Gora Dam. There's a picture here uh, of, of the dam, which is very, very awesome. Again, everything will be linked down below in the description in case you guys want to take a look at it for yourself. Um, it says the Intel Drop video showcases several campaign open combat missions, including one based at Verdansk's Gora Dam. Unlike the Gora Dam that players remember from 2019, the Gora River's water run deep into th 2023. From top of the dam, Simon Ghost Riley, who players control as part of this mission, must defuse several bomb sites in the vicinity of the dam, one of which is on a moving truck. How Ghost complete this, completes this mission is in your hands. Ghost is armed with a fully kitted out assault rifle for weapons, free engagement, but also has a silenced sidearm, a pair of binoculars, a lethal and tactical grenade, as well as additional equipment that may contain even more options for completing the mission. This is just Ghost. Uh, infill ordnance you have a wide variety of weaponry armaments and other items to optionally gather as the mission progresses and your tactics change and adapt so this is actually really interesting not only is where the campaign is being set in verdance which may mean that verdance is coming back as the next year's warzone map but also that last part about how it mentioned that there's a variety of weapons that you can pick from i wonder if that's very similar to what we had back in modern warfare 2 spec ops where there would be a wide variety of weapons on the ground and you got to kind of pick which weapons you wanted to use they were just all over the place i mean i can't really think of exactly what mission it was but i do know that it was there it was a really cool feature so uh, this mission also sounds really fun and i can definitely see a stealthy approach being successful and what we previously read about how there's not very many checkpoints and it's very very easy to die uh, means that maybe a stealthy approach is actually probably the better one if you're not careful so uh, really really cool really interesting stuff there so that then it says here 10 of many examples of what to do in open combat missions so this in short open combat missions are not linear they can be approached from numerous angles including uh, altering strategies at any point during the mission the longer story not in inclusive of the moment by moment choices to be made within these missions here are 10 true to the franchise actions and strategies to use in open combat mission though the true number of numbering of options present to you is almost limitless and only restricted by your tactical planning these are not exclusively ideas think of these as examples of what you can do in open combat missions so i'm not going to read all of these because that is a lot of reading uh, especially because there's 10 of these but again i will leave it linked down below and you guys can feel free to come back to this and read it through if you would like to uh, i'm just going to mention to you guys what the options are that they give you so it says here there's the stealth option there's the guns a blazing option there's the using your loadout option the picking up enemy ordinance option scavenging for more option and the on foot option parachuting parkour and more in water vehicles kill streaks and interactable items 
and all of that stuff. So there's lots and lots of stuff here. Again, you guys can feel free to read this. I definitely will be reading this after I finish recording this video. Uh, but it says, remember, during an open combat mission, you can change your approach at any moment. Just keep in mind what many multiplayer veterans will tell you is key to mission success. Play to finish objectives. Uh, essentially, open combat missions are based on ideals of player choice and challenge. You'll be intentionally challenged by enemies in a variety of different ways, in part because if you get no resistance as you're going through, then there is no reason to try different strategies. Though the resistance your adversaries bring is as impressive as it is varied, there is still a great deal of room to improve your way to victory. You may even decide to challenge yourself on some of these which we of course saw in the video with the going knife only or how fast you can complete the mission. Uh, and then that is basically it. So uh, the article, the Call of Duty blog here does say next mission, Call of Duty next on October 5th and all of that stuff, which is really, really cool. So that is pretty much going to do it guys for all of this information. Uh, the rest of the information here in this blog just talks about beta dates and Call of Duty next, which we all talked about uh, deep in yesterday's video. And of course, all of the pre-order stuff as well, which they're, they always he heavily push pre-orders, but it definitely makes sense because, you know, they're out to make money at the end of the day. So that is actually going to do it, guys, for this video. I really hope you guys did enjoy it. Uh, definitely a lot of really interesting stuff there as far as combat, open combat mission goes. I'm definitely excited to take a look at how these play. Will they be fun? Will they be boring? I don't know. We'll have to see what happens here in the next couple of months. But still, things sound pretty awesome, and I'm definitely excited to give them a go. So anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did enjoy it, I like ratings. Always appreciate it. And check out any of my other previous videos from yesterday. I uploaded the very, very first bits of campaign gameplay, as well as a mini video talking about some of this stuff, but also some of the important beta dates. Uh, both will be linked down below. But anyways, I'll see you guys all on another Call of Duty video very, very soon.